Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Traceability is the key to compliance. My name is Roger Tyrell. I work as a customer success manager at uh, PDS Vision. I've been working with um, ALM, PLM, RM uh, requirements management is the red thread through the 20 years I've been working with this uh, topic. Uh, I've seen uh, a lot of uh, different companies approaching this matter and I have experience from diverse areas and uh, I also love karate and cats not necessarily in that order and up to this date I have not yet combined them I have never fought cats a little short about PDS vision we have now more than 2500 customers worldwide we have more than 280 employees and what we are in this matter a nordic presence we are the largest reseller of ptc software in europe during growth and through acquisitions but i would like to point out that we have with our 26 offices worldwide we have a nordic presence that guarantees that we are able to help you where you are located and what do our customers do then well there's a large variety in uh, our customers products as well as the way they are building products so we see everything from cad management that we are designing the product product life cycle, cycle management where you manage variants you manage uh, configurations of your products and all the way through aftermarket sales, uh, IoT, uh, augmented reality. So in short, whenever you think product development, think PDS vision and you will be all set to go. And for today's webinar on uh, compliance and compliance management on how do we actually make sure that we have a fair chance of being compliant i would like to start with a couple of facts around requirements that uh, made me think at the time when i saw them that a firm in in the us discovered that almost 20 percent of the development cost is rework and that's fine we do a lot of rework in products uh, sometimes in projects because we realize there's a better way to do it but i don't like the fact that you can point this directly to poorly defined and managed requirements. That is, in my somewhat biased uh, opinion, uh, unnecessary, to be honest. And if you look at an average project, which they look at in this uh, investigation as well, they, they see that 30 to 40 percent of the average project, project was rework. And 50 to 70 percent of that rework was re requirements related. So it means there's a lot of rework in the project, and a lot of that is requirements related equals unnecessary question mark. I think a picture which we all can relate to is somewhat this one. Uh, you have your projects, you have your company, you have your people uh, interacting with each other. You can see them inside the dotted line. There are several ways of uh, writing and sharing information requirements. So that is one thing within the dotted line. But you also share information outside. You also gain information from the outside. And that's where the standard and regulations exist, for example. So you put it into the environment where you already have a huge mix of Word documents, Excel documents, hard drives, uh, initiatives on uh, making it easier to share and uh, use information within the companies. But generally, it is uh, necessary to come up with a good strategy on how to in handle information and how that information should be kept and shared. So if we look at it from the compliance perspective, I would like to start out with the standards and regulations. And 
Looking at standards, uh, there is always a good definition residing online for almost any topic uh, that you can Google. Uh, but what you need to do in that case, as I see it, is to try to find the important essence of the message. So in this case, I would like to point out that the standard is established by consensus. People have consent upon something and then a recognized body has approved it. There's rules, guidelines and characteristics for activities that defines the standard itself. I didn't make that up. Uh, I found it in a guide to the project management uh, body of knowledge book. And looking upon the regulations, there are definitions for that as well, of course. But here is the difference that the regulation is a government imposed requirement, which compliance is mandatory. So what that actually means, and which you are uh, hurtfully aware of, is that standards is optional, but a regulation is mandatory. And if it was easy, then it would be like, oh yeah, we don't have to follow the standards because they are op optional, they are just regulations. But in the, tr in the real world, you need to comply to the standard to be able to sell products, to cohere to different uh, standards in different countries. If you get like an, uh, a stop for exporting your product, that will take a huge dent in your uh, profits. I can assure you that. I've been to companies where uh, FDA, the American Food and Drugs Association, have went in and uh, caused such an export uh, stop. And uh, when they come back to look upon uh, how uh, they are, uh, when they came back for the second visit to make sure that they are compliant, that everything has been taken care of, traceability, uh, information handling, as well as actually doing the gardening outside of the company. That's how the importance is set uh, in these matters when you actually get an export stop. There are referred to as several popular standards uh, around the world, and uh, uh, these that I have up here are connected to product development. And if they are popular or not, we need to follow them. Uh, I would like to point out that in this uh, webinar, I would point to um, uh, a possible solution where we use the requirements management approach to how we handle uh, uh, compliance. There are other ways to do it as well. If you look at for the medical device industry, which has the ISO 13485, for example, there is actually a framework that has been implemented into PTC windshield software directly, uh, which meets the processes by FDA and the ISO 13485 directly. And that is done within core windshield. I will show the windshield requirements management and uh, validation solution in comparison and combined with windshield. But if you're interested in the pure windshield solution, then there are a grouping of the quality management solutions, which handles document control, design control, and QMS surveillance and corrective actions directly in windshield. But that is uh, another webinar in itself. So why do we end up in these situations when you feel overwhelmed with information? That's, in my opinion, generally the case why we haven't explored the possibilities of traceability. And actually, the tool is not the solution, but the tool is a helpful thing to manage traceability because the human mind can only remember as many relationships as possible and throw in some change management on these relationships and you're usually lost uh, pretty pretty fast into the project and somehow i would wish that it was just as easy that we only have to follow standards and regulations but we need to take into consideration the customer requirements when we are looking at building a product we have to look at the internal requirements the requirements we know that needs to be fitted into the model, into the structure to make sure that we build high quality, 
products that will conquer the market, so to speak. But once you get these in place, then it's just starting building, right? You just jump straight ahead and start building it. But that's where I'm going to put my focus into the webinar today. It is not as easy as just gathering these types of documents as they usually are. Because this means that it's still up to the developer, to the designer, to decide how this is going to be interpreted. And that's my main message today. Make sure that we get the interpretation right. If I look at this standard, what does it really mean for us as a company developing this product, developing this service? And then we can start to design something. And in my world, Starting to design something actually means that you break down the interpretation, perhaps into product requirements, and then even as far as going to the parts, to the options and variants in windshield, to other requirements. Because this structure that we are aiming to look at, the structure satisfying the above layer, is the one that's going to guarantee compliance for us. And one important line to draw, I would definitely like to draw, draw the line here, is that when you look at interpretation, standards, regulation, customer requirements, internal requirement, they are defining the problem statement. It's not the problem in itself, but it's a problem statement. This is what we need to satisfy. This is what we need to build the product that is uh, showing and solving. So the solution that we are building, which we are happily always trying to build immediately, right away, a little bit too soon, before we made ourselves a complete picture on what actually needs to be done. And when you have this structure in place, it can be as many levels or as few levels as you, as you, are, uh, as you have the need for. But when you have the levels in place, you have a possibility to go in and do the verification and the validation on the correct levels as well. Since the verification and the validation is a vital part of showing that we are compliant. And this structure, this information structure that we are building, we can traverse this quite easily inside the tool because we can look at a standard a specific part in the standard, which is being uniquely numbered and identified, which goes into an interpretation, which then flows down into a product requirement and the traceability there that goes out to the system verification, which means that when the verification shows that this is not compliant, we look at the product requirement, we look at the interpretation, we look at the standard to see what needs to be changed and what needs to be governed. So the traceability, in short, the, it, it, is, it is there to understand how the requirements are satisfied. How are we going to make sure of that? And we need to trace those requirements through the layers of design. It is not the fact that we are building something you read the Word document containing the standard. We read the PDF containing the standard. That doesn't mean we have the full picture and can start designing something in Creo right away. We need to understand, and this is a vital thing, what's the impact of a requirement change? Or if a test changes, what is the impact of that? Can we still prove to an authority? Can we still prove to ourselves? that we are compliant even if something changes. That is one of the top challenges that we have today in this document-based world that we usually see. We understand how the requirements are tested. They can be tested through standards because it regulates how they are tested. How do those uh, test standards relate to the requirements that we have identified for the product and so on and so forth. And when the test fails, all these matters are there to prove compliance. So if we look shortly 
I've been talking a lot about requirements now, and uh, you've been led into believing I would only use the word compliance in this uh, webinar, perhaps. But um, in my opinion, the same thing applies for the requirement as for standards, as for regulations. You need to find a good definition. And I've been using the uh, Systems Engineering Book of Knowledge, where we again get a fancy statement, which is actually drawn out of the ISO 9007. Again, I identify the important thing. So a requirement identifies characteristics or constraints. Characteristics or constraints, hmm, sounds reasonable. Uh, and then we have the quality measures of them. They need to be unambiguous. They should only mean one thing. They need to be testable. They need to be measurable. And one thing that is always a bit debated in companies, they need to be necessary. And not only for product or process acceptability. Why do we have this requirement? Is there a rationale for having a requirement? Extremely important questions to ask yourself. And throwing in a little bonus, what is quality? Because everyone wants to build a, a quality product. And I've found two nice quotes, uh, which were done by two men who worked a lot of the after World War, World, World War II um, in Japan, when they started to build a lot of lean uh, uh, factories in uh, Japan, uh, that Philip Crosby said that the definition of quality is conformance to requirements. And if you read in standards and regulations into the word requirements here as well, I definitely agree. And Edward Deming said that quality should be aimed at the need of the customer present and future. So I would like to see this. If we are compliant, if we are using the best practices, the methods of getting compliance into action, we get the quality on, we get the quality for free, to be honest. And when you look at the standards and the regulations, you need to make sure that uh, you understand them properly in the sense of what do they mean for our product development, for our ways of handling information for our ways of providing services and the best examples for this review process that you need to do when you do the interpretation of the requirements is that you start with a peer review and you start with one to one and if you look carefully into the slide you might have already noticed the worst thing i know about uh, peer reviews is when people say that Oh, 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 yes, it's a great concept, but you have misspelled one to one. That's not the review that I want. I want the review where you go in and grasp what is the meaning with this? What, what are we aiming at and what is the value for us? And by doing that, we should start one to one and then go a little bit broader, two to four persons providing you with their opinions, providing you with input, and then perform a formal review. I've seen so many examples at customer sites where you have people sitting, writing their interpretations of standards and regulations, writing their requirements. They do that on their own. And then they th are thrown into a formal review. And the first thing they feel when they go into a formal review is that they feel that they are being questioned they are being uh, attacked somehow. So a good thing to remember, requirements are not your children. People are not criticizing your children. They are trying at best uh, to understand what you're writing. So we need to make sure that we have, before the formal reviews, prepared and gone into the smaller audiences before going into a larger audience. And don't underestimate the non-subject matter experts. And what do I mean by that? Uh, sometimes in my line of work, I get to answer uh, uh, requests for information where uh, people are sending me information on how does this requirement management tool work and uh, do they have this functionality? 
And, and when I write this, it's actually much better for me to show this to someone who is not the subject matter expert because they will try to understand what I mean. Because in my head, everything is clear because I understand the, the subject so much better than they do. So the danger is when you go into believing that you are writing for someone who is exactly like you, that you are interpreting for someone who will understand it in the same way you do. And it's not the homogeneous group that we are writing for. We need to take into part the differences and actually the qualities that uh, a, a, a wider audience, a diverse audience brings into the picture. If you were to build products that would only suit one person, yourself, you would be the only one buying it in the end, I'm afraid. So looking at the interpretation, that, that's pretty straightforward as I see it. Well, coming in from the standard regulations, customer requirements um, and uh, internal requirements, the interpretation of them can be written down. This is what they mean to us. So essential meaning of interpretation, act or result of explaining or interpreting something the way something is explained and understood. Straightforward, not always done at the uh, uh, customer sites, not always done by me in all situations, but there's room for improvement. So that's tightly connected with the, uh, uh, with the uh, standards and regulations. Uh, looking at another statement, a rationale. Uh, a rationale. Uh, for us not uh, being native English speaker, sometimes uh, words uh, uh, tend to um, slip away and we sort of uh, think we understand them. And uh, uh, that, that's one thing I've learned during the years that some words are really, really worth looking up. So looking at rationale. So it's an underlying reason, an explanation of the principles of opinion, belief, practice, or phenomena, but an underlying reason is the best thing. Why do we have this requirement? Elicitation is another word that uh, uh, comes to mind when it comes to looking up words. Requirements, elicitation is the gathering of requirements. So elicitation is not the, a word as a Swedish speaking uh, person uh, comes to mind at first. But Interpretation, rationale, that's what I'm going to use in the demo. Because it's got not going to be worth anything if I can't try to at least uh, show what uh, can be the advantages of uh, using a tool in the right situation. I know I did as, um, as a startup for a previous uh, webinar I had, I did a uh, uh, a comparison by knocking in a nail with a screw with an electronic screwdriver and that's exactly what we are doing sometimes we we try to use tools that were designed to do something completely different and trying to force them in to doing something that uh, they were not meant to do so but let's look at uh, another um screen that I have uh, inside here and uh, I will slightly look to the right because this is my second screen and I apologize for that. So there are two types of users that could be using this um, uh, this tool, the windshield RVNS, windshield requirements and validation solution. Uh, re windshield requirements, validation and source solution. So the, the, the non-frequent user would probably use the web interface. And the web interface is called Doc Studio. It would contain, uh, as we would call it in the requirements uh, management solution, the documents. A document is in the requirement solution, a document that if I open up, uh, one of them will be easier to explain it. If I open up the document, it is what looks like a, a Word document almost, because it will give you an outline here on the left-hand side. Uh, it will give you a possibility to navigate uh, the different uh, 
uh, structures as you would inside a Word document, but you will also have the possibilities of, uh, uh, of an Excel sheet by adding new columns with more information that's uh, necessary for understanding the information in itself. So I would go in and uh, look at the uh, different documents in different scenarios. It would mean that I uh, simply open them. And for every paragraph that I have within the, uh, uh, within the document, it's actually uniquely identified. So every paragraph will be its own item, its own object. So for example, this statement in here with the identifier of 9178 it is unique it will never ever be another 9178 inside this database actually and that ensures us that whenever we change something whenever we update something that goes directly into the history file and we can see who did what when and why so if I scroll down, I would actually see uh, a little bit further down that I have in the section 8.2 here. I have information that uh, I need to perhaps understand. So. Since this is being an ISO mock-up, uh, this is a statement that we need to understand. And for that understanding, I, might, I will now switch to the expert interface. So for the expert interface, it will contain the same type of information. Everything is uniquely identified and uh, everything that's uniquely identified will uh, be traceable on a whole brand new level inside the tool and looking at this information for the statement inside the standard which has a specific way of writing something it's not important what it says i even use dummy scripting it's a concept that's important here so i would look at the statement i would put in my interpretation i would write that just directly inside the tool so let me just copy that, uh, copy that statement. And I can take um, another statement in here. I'll interpret it. Uh, I create other attributes that I might need, like a priority. This is a high priority, for example. Um, this next one that is also interpreted, and it has a medium priority so now i'm done with my task i've done an invaluable effort to be honest i've looked at the standard and i've put down now the company interpretation of the standard it means that no one needs to go in and guess what this means in section 814 because what this means has actually been written down in the interpretation if we something changes then we look at the interpretation and then change the interpretation if needed what we then do is that we create requirements that satisfies these interpretations so i would go into a different document for example create a new requirement or if there are already requirements uh, that that should satisfy the statement in the standard then I would go in and uh, write in the rationale, the underlying reason why this satisfies. So I would write in why it satisfies, and then I would simply drag and drop to create a trace to the requirement that it satisfies. And then, I would have saved this one earlier, so I will save it now. So what then happens is that whenever we put in a statement that satisfies something, we will have a traceability link going from the standard to the requirement 
And then we can see that if we need to change 9348, there are two requirements that has been created to satisfy the standard. Those two requirements are then needed to be taken into consideration when there is a change. And looking at it from the, from the other side, it means that whenever we are looking upon a requirement that is there because of something, and it shows which standard it satisfies. So that's kind of the traceability that I'm aiming at and the traceability that's needed to be able to change something inside, uh, inside an information structure or in the documents themselves. There is simply not enough room to change the Word documents using Word uh, change functionality to get this information. And you can also add uh, another dimension of uh, the traceability, since if I go into the traceability thinking, I have a standard, I have an interpretation, I have a requirement, uh, and this needs to be tied into my uh, product structure, which resides in Windshield, then it is actually possible to directly from that requirement create and navigate from, from the non-expert user face, from the expert client, that works of course as well, but then going in and seeing from this perspective the version of the mechanical part, the resonator axis that has been tied into this specific requirement. But it also, if you need to, you can actually navigate all the way to windshield, looking at the product structure. And if you are familiar with windshield, I'm actually going to show you something that you haven't seen before. And that is actually the traces tab uh, that will come under structure. Uh, and the last one is traces, because that's when you invoke and start the possibility of tracing two requirements. And this means as a windshield developer, if you need to know the requirements information, it's quite possible to just hover over the identifier, looking at the requirement text directly from windshield without the need of going into a different tool. And then we have the other possibility of hovering another and so on and so forth. So the challenge is to, to build your structure to know your standards and uh, being prepared for all eventualities. And how do you do that? Well, I regularly recommend that we have a two to three day workshop where you sit down and look at the inputs and outputs, the possible document structure, the what we need to satisfy and what I haven't touched upon here, but it's a vital thing is that we are creating reports to non-licensed users. You should be able to see the information even if you don't have uh, a possibility of going into the tool or the need to go into the tool. Because inside um, the tools, there are functionality that is aimed at uh, gathering uh, uh, information and uh, making sure that uh, uh, you get the most out of the information in the database. So there are ways of putting it into pie charts, analysis situations, uh, live filtering. But again, that's a completely other webinar. Now for the questions. And uh, if you have any more questions, please uh, write them in the questions tab and I will answer them. And uh, a question that didn't come in, but uh, uh, I would like to phrase up the uh, the uh, barcode, the QR code that we have uh, uh, next to me in the Q and A slide. That's actually my LinkedIn profile. So if you take that with your camera, you can actually connect to me on LinkedIn. So over to the questions. Uh, standards are read only. Well, I, I guess that's. Uh, 
yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's probably due to the fact that uh, standards are um, you buy standards, and it's a quite big business to to sell standards. And when you buy a standard, you are not allowed to redistribute and copy. Uh, one way of getting around that is you can actually buy the standard for a company, or you can buy it for an individual, import it, and then you set the restrictions inside the tool so no one else can access it, and you can still write your interpretations from um, uh, from the standard, from the information. So that in that case, it means that you will not see the standard directly as a developer, for example, but you will see the company interpretations, which will be the requirements that you are going to, to satisfy. But I guess besides that, uh, everything was crystal clear because there are actually no more questions. So by that, I would like to uh, wish you a very good day and uh, good rest the next of the week. And if you have any questions that will come to you later on, don't hesitate to contact me. And uh, thank you very much and uh, take care.